Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I'm back again with my good bud, Radical Reggie. How's everybody doing? And yes, are you excited, man? Because... Dude, we're going to do an updated PlayStation 2 buying guide. Yes. It's been a while. It has, man. Almost like nine years. Yeah, the last, the last one was done in 2015, and <laughs> a lot has changed. So we're gonna we're gonna jump into all of that. Yeah, we're gonna talk about accessories, games, and of course the different console variations. So hope you guys are excited. Let's take a look. All right, we got a couple consoles here, starting with the original. Yes, PS2 original. Yeah, I love this thing. Um, so as you can see here, um, this I think this has one of the best designs out of systems. You know, a lot of systems today look kind of funky, but the PS2 design for me, I think was great. You know, stand it up, lay it down, all that good stuff. Now, a little bit about some of the stuff with this system that when it first came out, it did have issues uh, with this reading. You know, that was a big issue with Sony and yeah. everything like that. So just to let people know about that. Um, but they did get past it and, um, you know, it's, it's an easy fix nowadays, like changing lasers and things like that. Yeah, it's important to know that this has a, it has a drawer, basically a CD drawer, mm -hmm. DVD drawer that opens and closes. So there's really two things that can go wrong there is that the mechanism to open and close it can either wear out over time. Right. Uh, and also the, the laser, the relaser laser itself can either become dirty or damaged and needs to be replaced over time. Yeah. So that's something to look out for. The other thing is too, is the fan on the back. Yeah, the fan on the back is, a, is, a, is an issue. You want to make sure that thing is clean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, these games, I mean, it, it, depending on where you put it at, you can get a lot of dust in there. A lot of yeah. people don't realize it, and it yeah. gets caked up, and, and the you know, system starts acting, acting yeah. funky. Well, you can tell usually because it's loud. Yeah. Because <laughs> it it's really the, the system's working way too hard to play your games, and it, it can't breathe, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but a uh, cool thing about the system, it has these USB ports on here, and um, we'll talk about the some of the, the ports. I mean, well, some of the items that plug in the ports a little bit later, right. but um, there is the camera. There's another port that you can plug into. like a, like a, There was like this, um, this, this system, like a... Like LED system. lights or something. LED light you could plug up, like plug into it, like have it on attached to the system, make it like like bright and everything. You turn it on. It was really cool looking. Yeah. I used to have one. I don't know having to. It had a Final Fantasy one, but yeah. But uh, also too on the back here. The hard drive. The hard drive. Yeah. That was a, that was a really cool add on for me because I was really excited uh, for games to be like installed on the hard drive because for faster loading times and stuff right. like that. A game that was really well, the, uh, that came with the hard drive was actually Final Fantasy XI, so that was right. a big thing for Sony to go online. That was a major game for Sony. Yeah, it's to true. With the system, but now nowadays though, as collectors, a lot of collectors want the fat because you can't put the hard drive in there because mm -hmm. you can then install uh, homebrew and and, and you your can games install, to the hard drive. You got install a bigger hard drive, yeah, there, which is really cool. Yeah, so, yeah, you can make a lot of good stuff on there. Um, the thing, the thing about the hard drive too for me though is just like the load times for certain games because certain games. Like I, I, I'll, Resident Evil Outbreak was one of my favorite games on the system. Load times on the first game were horrible, but this hard drive eased the pain a bit. Uh, so did it really? Oh, oh yeah, huh, it did. That's interesting. It, did. it was pretty awesome. So yeah. And then you have the slim model there, which yeah. is so cool. Yeah, man. Um, this one right here, uh, obviously they they they, took, they trimmed it down a yeah, lot here, a as lot. you guys can see. It's impressive. And um, you know, they want to take a like like a lot of like the gear work out of there, so you want to deal with any problems like that. You know, way is, easier to clean the lens. You're not going to have that problem with uh, the slot coming in and out. Right, I mean, right. It's way more reliable. But it's sacrifice, you know, you can't install the hard drive to this one. So right. Just let people know that. That's but true. it does have the two USB ports still as well. Um, I really like this model too, man. I mean, it just looks really like compact. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can carry it around anywhere you want. Yeah. They're, but we have two of them for because they they revised this even further. Yeah. So, um, but this one had a power brick with it. Right. Um, where this this the last model I made for it didn't come with the power brick. The power brick is actually built inside, so you can plug them. I forgot what you call that plug. This it's a, it's a, yeah, it's kind of like more of a standard plug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just plug but it in. It's again, it's amazing how much they packed into that. Yes. It's like. Sony's incredible that way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, seriously, they did a good job with this. Very impressive systems, and mm -hmm. they and they only did like two two remod well, one remodel, so it's, it's yeah. perfect. You know, so definitely really cool with that. Um, like I said, with these with these systems, I personally prefer the original, but all of them are good and they're outstanding systems. And in Japan, um, they had a lot of different colors for these systems too. Than we got. I know. It, isn't that always the case? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now let's move on to accessories. Starting with accessories, you really need two of them for sure. And to start with, you need a controller. Yes, definitely. And not only a controller, you got to have a memory card as well, but the controllers, yes. 
Uh, pretty easy to find these. Uh, as you can see, still, Jason still has some. In the box. In the I box. know. If you found some, really, really <laughs> awesome. Um, another thing about the controllers that you can actually use the PS1 controllers on the system as well. So yeah. um, just let people know that. There's so many controllers out there, you won't have a hard time finding any. They sold millions of them, basically. They and did, so, did. Yeah, and they still, they're pretty bulletproof. They still work mm -hmm. really well. Yeah. And so you see my one, one of my originals right here, yep. you know, and there's <laughs> a bunch of different colors that you can get. But if you're looking for new controllers for the system, they yeah. have uh, the Retro Fighters has this one, the Defender here. Yeah. A wireless controller for the PS1 and PS2 system. So definitely really cool. Yeah, it's cool. It comes with a little adapter that you plug in there yep. and it makes it wireless. It's rechargeable. It's yep. it's awesome. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I feel like wireless is the way to go these days. Yeah. But, you know, some people may prefer the old school cords. You know, just don't trip over them. Yeah, which I do way too often. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, as you mentioned though, the other thing that you're going to need is a memory card, which yeah. is such a foreign idea to right. new gamers, right? The yeah, seriously, yeah. The memory card. And so you see that I have one right here. However, I should mention right. that this one is special mm -hmm. because nowadays you have many, many options. You can go old school. You can find lots of memory cards. Right. Um, but there are basically companies out there that are making really kind of like modern versions of it. And so one of them I want to mention is called the Memcard Pro 2 by a company called 8-Bit Mods. And it costs about $42. And it, they advertise it as mm -hmm. the only memory card that you'll ever need for the PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation 1. I'm already about it. So I can put all my, my data on that memory card and be good to go. It's amazing, dude, because it uses an SD card that you provide. Mm -hmm. And so you put like a 64 gigabyte SD card in there or whatever. You can, it, what it will do is virtually create 128 8 megabyte PlayStation 2 cards, okay. memory cards. So imagine you had 128 of these, mm -hmm. which will handle multiple games themselves. Right, right. And it'll create over 8,000 memory cards for the PlayStation 1. Oh, wow. So you'll <laughs> never need one again. And it auto detects the game as you put it in there. So it'll swap back and forth between them. Wow, okay. And it'll also auto launch free McBoot, which nice. is basically this custom firmware. Yes. That you would put on the memory cards. Yes. And it would open up the PS2 to a lot of like, uh, you could play like import games and things like that. Yeah, you, know? you can install them to the hard drive. Yep. It, it has its own launcher, basically. Mm -hmm. it, it, it basically launches you into something called OPL, which is an open PlayStation 2 launcher. Right, right. And it's just a soft mod, so you're not like, uh, yeah changing the system or anything like that. So pretty cool to have that on that memory card. Yeah, definitely. And of course, you know this, that there's companies out there that also will physically mod these as well if yes. you don't want to hassle with any of that. Yeah, yeah. Project Retro Games actually mods the systems hardcore, like they change out the parts so these systems are region free uh, after that. So you, you just put it in, any game in there you want, and boom, you're here. You're locked in, so that's cool. Having the PS2 region free really opened up the library for me. Like I found out about games I never even knew existed. It was a really amazing experience. So. We're gonna get a little bit more into that yeah. when we get into the game side of it for sure, because yeah. that is a huge deal. Um, so those are those are the the two accessories that you're definitely gonna want to get. But of course, there's much more than that. Now, of course, you got a PlayStation 2 and you want to play it on a modern television, right? What are you gonna do? Well, I think a lot of people run off to Amazon and they buy a really cheap knockoff kind of connector, you know? Right, which is not a great idea. No. You know, um, there's just a lot of fake ones out there and you have to really be careful because- The quality is often terrible yeah. and they may introduce uh, latency in there, mm -hmm. which will ruin your gaming experience. Yeah. And so what I'm gonna show you today is what I recommend people do. Oh. The the first option is just go out and get the Rad 2X. Okay. So the Rad 2X is a third party connector and you see it right here. Basically what it has in here is something called a Retro Kink 2. Okay. So this is a really loved upscaler or line doubler essentially for converting an analog signal into a digital one for, for your, your modern television. Okay. So they, they took just the what they needed from this right. and put it into here. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so this is totally plug and play. You don't need to do anything with this. You yes, plug, that's what you want. That's what you want, right? <laughs> you know, and so this is this is more expensive. This is about, I think, $70. Okay. So you have to consider, do you just need a solution for just the PlayStation 2, or do you want something that's a little bit more, you know, you can use it for everything, essentially. Well, it's it's about that experience, you know, because the, the, a lot of people don't realize the PS2 was a pretty much 480i, which is like, 
the interlace is like, ugh. Like, you I know, think there's a handful of games that do 40p, like I think, yeah. but there's not many. Not many of them, yeah. you know, but this thing really helps out, you know, so. Yeah, because again, this is made by a company called RetroTank, a dude named Mike Chi. He's really well respected. Right. These, the, the, the video quality is excellent. It doesn't stretch the image. Right. The colors are right. It doesn't add latency. If you're serious about getting, you know, a reasonably priced solution for this to your HD television, this is what I recommend. Yeah. And so far under, under a hundred bucks. Well, this one is, one is okay. this one right here because it supports multiple systems and, ah, and, and multiple inputs okay and has just more options yeah uh i believe this one was like 120 130. okay and i want to mention just because it's out there but the, you also have solutions like the retro tink 5x so this one will upscale it to 1080p what yes so but again it's more expensive okay but it, it'll and it supports multiple consoles right? right so you don't have to just use this on your playstation 2 you could use it on your original okay. xbox your your super nintendo your sega saturn everything because it's got you know it's got a bunch of different yeah you know, that's, that's, that's and then this one right here not going to be for everybody but yeah. this will upscale it to 4k you gotta be kidding me really yeah but this is expensive I bet it was going to 4K, <laughs> like, wow. Like, yeah, new game in 4K. again, really high quality, no latency. You it's know. probably a mind-blowing experience seeing a PS2 game in like 4K or even 1080p. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's probably like a brand new experience for a lot of people. And so that's why I wanted to kind of show people the gamut here because obviously this is not gonna be for everybody. Right. Get this one if it, all you care about is the best quality at a reasonable price. Right. But if you've got a game room with a bunch of consoles, yeah, you might want to consider upgrading that that you know thing. Or you might go for this. Yes, the PS3 backwards compatible system. Yeah. Definitely a good choice. You know, um, I think there's two there's two versions of the backwards compatible PS2, um, but this one is the best one. This is the 60 gig version. Um, this is definitely a great option to play a lot of the games on. I would say. You know. Yeah, I mean that's the thing is, is that it, when the the PlayStation 3 first launched, Sony included in there the hardware to yeah. run all your PlayStation 2 games, which is amazing because this outputs HDMI. It also does smoothing. It's got yeah. options in the menu where it can actually make them look a little bit better. Definitely. To be honest. If I'm in a pinch and I, you know, and this is hooked up right. and I want to play place, I do use this a lot. Yeah. The only caveat is, is that the failure rate on these can be higher than you would probably like. Yeah, and you know that's that that was the issue. Um, yeah. But now with technology today, like people, they they know how to fix our know how to protect your system, yeah. changing the thermal place and all that stuff. Um, you can find usually the systems probably on eBay for around like two hundred bucks. Yeah, I, I, I was looking today and there was a bunch of them on there for around two hundred dollars. And yes, that's kind of expensive for a retro you know gaming console. But consider this plays PlayStation three games, PlayStation two games, and, and one. PlayStation one. I mean. Yeah, that's probably like 7,000 games or something. Yeah, yeah, seriously. It's so impressive. It's a, it's a good option just to, for you guys. Yeah, definitely. All right, so next thing we want to go over is some more accessories here. Uh, I brought some stuff here myself that a lot of people probably don't even know about. And here's the monitor for the Slim, which is a, I think this is made by Pelican, yeah. Honestly, that's, I mean, th that almost looks like a, a laptop. You know it, what I mean? I know, right? And, it looks, yeah. and it's so compact. Dude. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And the screen looks great. I mean, seriously. <laughs> um, very impressed with this one. But the more impressive screen, which is the last one I bought a few years ago, um, I had no idea this, these existed. Um, Zenith which was a TV company yeah, back in yeah, the day. Yeah. They made this monitor and- um, Which is looks like it's almost modeled after the PlayStation 1. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's what, exactly what they were going for. But not only that, you could actually rotate this thing. You turn it around or angle it, you know? <laughs> I love that type of stuff. That, that's amazing. And they yeah. made these were, I think they made them for other systems too, but still this, like, I never knew this existed until a couple of years ago. So yeah. it's like, man, like, and another accessory that that we forgot to mention was actually the eye toy. If right. you guys remember that thing, um, it was gimmicky at the time, I yeah. would say, yeah. but it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool because it was it was you know Sony and, and, and other companies were starting to do kind of augmented reality mm -hmm. stuff, and also to, you know cameras were becoming cheaper and, and better, and so it made sense that, right. that they would have that. So and you could also actually hook a, a webcam to the system and use that as an eye toy as well. Yeah. So, wow. Some of them actually work better. I mean, it's toy. that's the thing that the PlayStation 2 was so popular and that there were so many accessories out there. We barely covered it here. But just be aware that once you go down that rabbit hole, uh, you mm -hmm. might be like Reggie and you're you're digging through Goodwills. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Which is pretty fun, actually. <laughs> well, at least it was back in the day. But, you know, yeah, <laughs> definitely. So now let's take a look at some games that we recommend. So now we're gonna talk about some PlayStation 2 games that you might wanna pick up. However, 
we're going to acknowledge that a lot of you are probably already familiar with some of the more popular titles. God of War, things like that. Gran Turismo, mm -hmm. Grand Theft Auto, all fantastic games that you yeah. would obviously want to play on the PlayStation 2. Right. But you already know about those, right? So we're going to go a little bit deeper into the game. Yeah, we, we want to talk about more games that are exclusive to the system even yeah. to this day. Yes. Know, at least that we know of. So, yeah, um, yeah let's start off with, um, with some of yours. Well, I mean, the thing is, right off the bat, the PlayStation 2 was a RPG powerhouse mm -hmm. with the golden era RPGs, oh. uh, definitely during the PS2. So many RPGs, and we could do whole videos, just multiple videos on it. But right. and so, I just want to mention that yeah, if you love RPGs and a lot of them did not get to the Xbox or the GameCube, you might want to consider getting the PlayStation 2. Yeah. I have some of my favorites right here. I oh, have yeah. basically uh, Xenosaga 1, 2, and 3, plus there's a little movie disc that was also released for it nice. to kind of catch people up. Mm -hmm. And this is just yet one example of an amazing RPG series that blew my mind when it yep. came out. And it, you know I love it because it's about the future, it's got mechs in it. It's got yep. a, cr a crazy story that sometimes Good doesn't voice even... acting too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just epic in every sense of the word. And, you know, absolutely everyone who is into JRPGs should definitely play it. It can be kind of hard to, to find, a little bit expensive sometimes. Mm -hmm. Just be aware that, you know, that is the case with some of these. Um, you have multiple ways to play them. So, yeah. you know, but I, I want to start with Xenosaga. Great, great choice, man. Well, mine is kind of infamous in a way because we talked about it years ago in the okay. PS2 Hidden Gems video. That's right, I remember that. But exclusive to the system, Samurai Western. And a lot of people still don't know about this game. It's a fun action beat em up game that's a pretty wild. I mean, like a Samurai in the Western. Like, yeah. You know, like blocking bullets and all that stuff and just like counter and attack. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And a lot of people don't know this game is actually two players. You know, you can actually play two players. Hmm. Uh, one as the, as the Samurai and one as the Gunslinger. So definitely a unique title for the PS2. And um, it's kind of like a part of the way of the samurai series but more of like a spin-off i would say okay so definitely cool and it has a reversible cover but this is the reverse cover which i like better yeah yeah so okay for me it's not gonna be that much of a surprise i love racing games on the playstation 2 <laughs> and there were tons of them right and many of them never got to other systems and so two of them i want to mention here downhill domination and also a game i always talk about it's in my intro every once in a while is splashdown rides gone wild yes two absolutely fantastic racing games uh they're they're kind of extreme sports they're mm -hmm. over the top there's trick systems in there they're just awesome even yeah. today yeah and splash out doesn't get the recognition it deserves man it does people have to play that game it, it, the, the creator had great ideas for that game yes so much stuff going on that are implemented in, in the racing games today like the whole transformation of the tracks and everything yeah i mean absolutely that's the thing that's really great about this game now, now i want to be clear there's two Splashdown games. I'm t referring to the sequel here because well, I, that, that's my favorite. Right. And but to Reggie's point, one of my favorite things about it is that all of the tracks change every lap, mm -hmm. and sometimes in the middle of a lap. And it's yeah. really, really cool to watch that happen. Yeah. It keeps you on your toes. It it makes you want to go back and replay them to to mm -hmm. learn the different play you know, right. ways to go through it and mm -hmm. stuff. It's a masterpiece. I'm I'm just so bummed we never got either. Uh, another game in this series yeah, yeah. or an HD remaster. I mean, it'd be just amazing. So yeah, a remaster sounds pretty good. And then maybe from that, you could go into a sequel. Hopefully. Yeah. Maybe one day, who knows? Maybe one day. If I, if I win the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> um, so next game here for me, Sony actually uh, made this game, but they didn't publish it for some reason. Hmm. Uh, Namco actually published it when they were just Namco. And that is Ghost Hunter. Man, this game is so much you fun. You originally told me about this one too, yeah. Yeah, yeah the graphics on this game, you can tell Sony did it because they put all, so much effort into it. Hmm. It's shocking they didn't bring it out to America. But you pretty much play as a as a detective named Lazarus Jones. Uh, him and his, his partner go to the school to investigate uh, a missing person or something like that. And then all all hell breaks loose. So you find out like an underground basement and like you go through these different time periods and find these go. It's, it's so much fun. And it, it's shocking, the voice acting is well done. Uh, but what really blew me away were the graphics. I mean, you can tell like they pushed it. Like, yeah. it's, it's an amazing game. Huh, okay. All right, next up is another game I've talked about in the past, and people laughed at me, and I'm going to mention it again. A true Hidden Gem. True Hidden Gem. That is Kim Possible, What's the Switch? Have you played this game, dude? Yes, yes. It's... It's, it's way better than you expect. Yeah, I believe I played it on your recommendation too. That's yeah. why I picked it up. It's a 2.5D platforming game. I don't know anything about the show. I don't think I've ever watched an entire episode. I don't, I don't, you don't need to. Right. I mean, it's basically just kind of like a espionage, 
uh, you know, platforming game that's just got the 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 controls and the level design dialed in. It's got a bunch of variety. Right. It's extremely well made, and again, it never really gets talked about. Right on, man. Yeah. So nice. Um, next thing for me, we've got a rail shooter here, which I believe is exclusive on the system, or maybe it might be on PC, but anyways, hmm. it's just end game, uh, rail shooter, uh, like time prices. You like games like that. I don't ever hear anybody ever talk about this. No, game. no. And, um, huh. you know, it's, it's actually a really good rail shooter. Um, it uses the gun con gun con too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of the, the, the newer ones that at the time didn't use the gun con one. You had to play, use the gun con too. So it's kind of cool. It's like backwards compatible. Yeah. Like so definitely a really good game. Uh, it's not expensive. It's a cheap game. So definitely something out to look for if you like rail shooters, I would say. Okay. Uh, next up for me is another exclusive there. I believe these were actually published by Sony and that is uh, the Mark of Cree mm -hmm. and uh, the Rise of Kasai. And these are platforming adventure beat 'em ups games that that you know came out for the PlayStation Two, mm -hmm. and they're extremely good. All original, you know. When people talk about today, it's like, hey, nobody's making any original games anymore. Well, if you haven't played these, go back and play these because right. these are extremely high quality. Like you're saying, Sony put the the work in to make them look right, beautiful. Right. Yeah. And the only thing I would say is that the controls are a little funky. It's definitely that era of. So you gotta get used to the yeah. Uh, you have to controls. get used to it a little bit. There are a bunch of tutorials. You're gonna have to kind of go through those. It's gonna be annoying, but once you do, it'll become second nature, and they're fantastic. And we got two of them. So. Oh man, now I need to go back with it because I always pass these games up because I didn't like the cover. But yeah, and I don't know if they sold very well. I mean, we they did two of them, so they were committed. But uh, yeah, I was very impressed. So many creative ideas during that era. Oh, yeah. totally. So my next choice, and one of my favorite games of all time, uh, still to this day, I love it. Rogue Galaxy is amazing. And you know, it's it's unfortunate because this game could have got a sequel, but it didn't meet, reach, it didn't quite reach that mark to be a greatest hit. It's you know? weird because a lot of people love this game. It got some buzz from people mm. who played it. Right. But yeah, for whatever reason, people passed it by. Right, right. But they did put, port it to the PS4 as a digital. Oh, they did. Okay. So you can play it like that too. That's but cool. It's an amazing game. Uh, a lot of effort went to it. Uh, Level 5 did a great job on this game. Uh, the voice actors, the story. To, the story to me, I thought was great. Some people think it's niche, but I loved it, man. I'm like, man, that story's cool. Yeah. So, definitely a, a gem on the system, I will say. Now, here I have a, a couple games that I'm, uh, I'm obliged to cover because I just oh. want to. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a point to this, and that is that the SSX series on the play, I'm missing the fourth one here because I don't really like that one as much. But one of them is exclusive to it. The first one? The first one. Yeah. It's the reason why I originally got into PlayStation 2. Yeah. My buddy owned this. He lived over at uh, Bellevue, and mm -hmm. I would have to drive over to his house to play it. Yeah. So I finally was like, I'm just going to get it. Yeah, this was a launch title for the system. It yeah. was a big seller for the system, because I wanted the PS2 immediately just to play this game at the time. Yeah, and you know, out of these three, it's not necessarily my favorite, because they, basic, they, they improved it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. However, it's still a fantastic game. Right. And the other thing I want to mention, too, and I've talked about my buddy Paul, because he and I would play these games a lot, he prefers to play them on the PlayStation 2 because of the controller. Mm. Because these games, it's all about tricks. And right. so your your fingers are in your, your right, right. You know, and having the PlayStation 2 control a little bit smaller, it's easier to kind of get you know the, the different button combinations right, with right. that. And he's right. It is the best place to play these games. And uh, mm. so, yeah. SSX one, two, and three. <laughs> okay. Uh, my my last game here. Um, um, later release for the series, uh, the company who did it was a, was a really unique company, but unfortunately they kind of fell under. Um, but um, here is God Hand for the PS2, uh, an amazing game. I bought this when it first came out, and it's it's kind of like a comedic version of Fist of the North Star. That's the way a good way to describe it. It's completely over the top. It is. It's silly. It's violent. It's yeah. it's hilarious. It's crazy, and the controls are. Uh, Take a bit to get used to, like yeah. finding the right combo for your attaching the right combo to your your character. I like the sugar gene combo, but um, it's definitely a really unique game, and that's where it comes to like when we talked about like the PS2 era really had a lot of creative ideas during that time. Like like yeah. sixth generation was a great time for yeah. video games. So. It, I know it's it's so funny how we got. I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg here. Yeah, you know, and I mean, it just goes on and on and on, including imports. Yes, you know, games we did not get. Now, here's the thing. The the PlayStation 2 is region locked. 
and mm -hmm. so it's kind of annoying in that way. Yeah, and um, that's where like like stuff like uh, Freeman Boot comes in to help out. Yes. Um, also, like I talked about uh, Project Retro Games, they do mods, yes. like, they mod systems for so they're region free. Right, because I mean, it was such a popular console worldwide, there are exclusives. So we have, like, we have a couple of them here. One, you know, some of them are PAL, yeah. some of them are Japanese, yeah. right? And the first one we'll talk about is actually Initial D. This is a great racing game, arcade racing game. Yeah. Had a lot of fun with it. I actually got this a couple of years ago and I was like blown away by how good it was. I'm like, wow, this game is fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, you would wish it would have came out to America, but it, I don't think it was really popular like in America, like with the TV show. That's why it stayed in Japan. Right. But that's why, you know, that's why you got to look out there for like other games in other regions because there's a lot of great gems out there. Yeah, 100%. Um, and then of course you've got like a great arcade shooter collection here, 1945, uh, one and two. Yep. There's other ways to play this, obviously, mm -hmm. today, but for collector... And the PS2 enthusiast. Yeah, absolutely, which is why I wanted to have this. So, right. But again, this is a PAL title here, you can right. tell because it's blue, and if you don't have a modded console, you're going to need to get... I, I mean, it's a pain in the butt. You'd, you'd have to have the PAL console and a PAL TV, a 50 right. hertz television. Yeah, uh, some of the games have options in them to where they can switch the, 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 the that's region. True. I mean, not the region, but the uh, the resolution. That's you true. That's, there's a list right. online for that type of stuff, so you know which games have it in there. Yeah. So you, you know what to deal with. Yeah. Um, next game here is Dragon Sisters. This is a beat em up game on the system, a 3D beat em up game, but it's more like a side view, I would say. Yeah. It was actually really a lot of fun. I, I, could, I don't know why this didn't come to America, um, but it seemed like a really legit game. Um, it's, I, I don't know what else to say about it, man. I feel like every beat em up game should have came over here. Yeah. That's just me because I like beat em up <laughs> genre. But this is a really cool game that a lot of people don't even know about. And when I was doing my, when I got my test system years ago, this was one of the games I found out about, and I thought it was pretty amazing. At least at the time, I haven't played it recently, but I had a good time playing it when it when I got it. So now we alluded that some of these games can be hard to find, maybe expensive and rare, but honestly, emulation in the last ten years has come a long way. Yeah, uh, one of the emulations I think PC. Um, what was it called? PCF. PCSX2. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I forget what it was. I know. <laughs> But uh, that is a great way to play these games as well. Yeah. Because, you know? like I said, some of these games are uh, maybe not be affordable to you or whatever like that, but there are ways for you to play them. And when it comes down to it, folks, I mean, these developers wanted you to be able to play these games and right. experience them. So yeah. that's the most important part. And also, too, one of the great things about running emulation like this is that often the the resolution is increased. Right. Like, it'll be a higher resolution, so it'll look better, like, say, on your 4K television. Sometimes they're able to improve the textures and they look fantastic. Yeah. You know, um, maybe a higher frame rate as well. And also, too, like, amazingly, sometimes it'll even run on portable devices like this, the, the Steam Deck. Yeah. You know? Definitely. Yeah. It's incredible, or like a laptop. So, you know, we don't really care how you play these games. We just want you to play them because we love them so much. And this is, like I said, it's only the tip of the iceberg. Once you go down the path of PlayStation 2 games, the sky's the limit. There's a the genre there. I will say this too, and I think I said it earlier in the video, but uh, it, the sixth generation pretty much had a lot of creative ideas yes. uh, for games. You'll see a lot of ideas that don't even exist today. Yeah. Amazing time for video games. Yeah, well, developers took chances. They did. You know, yeah. and, and it was very creative at the time. And, and you know, in some ways we've kind of lost it a little bit. Yeah. So it's really fun to go back and, and again, just rediscover this stuff. And that's kind of what this video is all about. So whether you're looking at the original hardware, or emulation or somewhere in between, you know, hopefully this video helped you out. So yeah, definitely. where can people find you on the internet? Hey, dude? The radical one, come check me out. I really appreciate it. And yeah, All right. out. maybe do a cool video. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.